When you first open Mastercam, you'll be presented with the main view sheet shown here. Along the top of the screen, you'll find the Quick Access Toolbar. Below that, you'll find the ribbon. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll find the sidebar. By right-clicking anywhere in the middle of the screen, you'll find that you have access to the right-click context menu. All of these menus will be discussed in more detail under the following headings. The Quick Access Toolbar can be found at the top left corner of your Mastercam window. Each of these small icons here can be moved or changed to any icons that you find convenient. For the moment, we'll briefly go through which icons you can find here by default. First, you'll find the New File button, which as it sounds, you can create a fresh blank Mastercam file by clicking this button. Next, you'll find the Save button. This is convenient for making quick saves of your progress as you're working. Keep in mind, though, that before you can use this Save button, you'll have to first set a name for your file. Third icon here is the Open button. You can use this to open an existing Mastercam file. We then have Print, which will allow you to print either through a printer or to a PDF on your computer to create uh, engineering drawings or reference sheets or tool lists or things like this. Next we have the Save As button. This would be probably the first way you'll save your file because it allows you to select the name and after you've sa used Save As you can then use the Save button on subsequent saves. Next is Zip to Go which is primarily a tool used for corresponding with uh, Mastercam tech support, and then we have undo and redo, uh, used for stepping back or forward to changes we've made to our file. Um, please note that not all changes we make to a Mastercam file can be reverted in this way, but in general this is a quick way of stepping forward or back. The ribbon in Mastercam can be found along the top of the screen just below the Quick Access Toolbar. There are several tabs integrated within the ribbon. The first tab is the File tab. Within the File tab we can find many of the same options that are found in the Quick Access Toolbar. Additionally to those, however, there's also a Help tab which contains tutorials and tips for various aspects of Mastercam use. And as well we can find the Configuration tab. In the Configuration tab, we can make edits to certain features and settings on the back end of Mastercam uh, that we'll use from time to time, but not too often. Uh, finally, back in the File tab again, there is also the Options tab here, which contains the options to edit the different menus we've talked about so far and change the icons that appear in them. We won't go too deeply into this right now. The second tab found in the ribbon is the Home tab. From here, we can edit things like the line style, the line width, the point style, and the color of various features in our drawing. Additionally, we have access to the Analyze Entity and Analyze Distance tools, which are very useful for verifying features of a drawing, whether that's a wireframe or a solid model. Moving back up to the tabs here, we're going to go to the Wireframe tab. Within the Wireframe tab, we can find all the different tools required to create wireframe entities within Mastercam. Wireframe entities are usually ste step one of creating a model. Oftentimes, after we've created a rudimentary wireframe, we would move on to solid modeling. You'll notice that solids is one of the tabs we'll consider in a moment. Before that, though, we have the Surfaces tab. In the Surfaces tab, we have several tools for manipulating uh, said surfaces. You can think of a surface kind of like uh, one plane of a solid object. If you can imagine holding a solid object in your hand and removing one side of it, whatever that side looks like, that's a good comparison for what a surface might be. They can be any shape, really. They can be organic or rigid. Um, but 
typically they resemble one side of an object removed, or one feature of an object removed. The Solids tab is where we can create and edit solid objects, full solid objects that have all of their sides intact. This is typically the final stage of modeling, which we will then typically use to toolpath and then convert those toolpaths to code for a CNC machine. The Model Prep tab contains certain specialized tools for editing solids manually. We don't often use these in many cases, but sometimes they can be very useful. The Drafting tab contains all the tools we need to create accurate engineering drawings or sketches of parts we may be working on in Mastercam. We can dimension, we can make notes, we can do leaders, and we can even do cross-hatching and tables and things of that nature. The Transform tab has just a handful of tools, but they're not to be discounted. All of these tools are extremely useful in different elements of geometry creation. Things like moving features around, rotating them, mirroring them, or scaling them, among other things. Those are just some of the useful tools that can be found here. The Machine tab is typically used for selecting the type of machine that we want to create toolpaths for once we have a model already created. Finally, the View tab contains all of the different tools for viewing our part in different ways. It's worth noting that most of the tools found in this particular tab can be more conveniently accessed from the right-click context menu, shown here. However, there are a couple of features found exclusively in the View tab, one of which is the Show Axes toggle, which you'll notice is turning on and off the crosshair on my screen, and the other feature is the Show Grid toggle, which also is a toggleable feature that aids in geometry creation. The side panel, or sidebar, can be located on the left-hand side of the screen when in Mastercam. Along the bottom of the side panel, there are five different tabs here by default. Toolpaths, Solids, Levels, Planes, and Recent Functions. To begin, we'll look at the Toolpaths tab for a moment. Within this tab, we would see a list of all of the toolpaths currently created for a project, if there were any. In addition, we have a number of these buttons at the top, which function uh, for several different purposes to allow us to reorder, analyze, and verify the various toolpaths we create. The second tab we have here, the Solids tab, again, if we had any solids created, they would show up here in a list. From this screen, we'd be able to edit them, delete them, or regenerate them if needed. In the Levels tab, we find a collection of useful features that are especially helpful when we're dealing with large or complicated files. Levels allows you to separate different objects within a drawing to different layers, or as Mastercam calls them, levels to keep straight what you're working on. In the Planes tab, we have access to the different views that we're able to look at or work on our part from. From here, we can create new views or edit existing views. The Recent Functions tab, as, as you might expect, contains a list of anything we've done recently within Mastercam. Any of these tabs that we've just talked about can be hidden or shown from the View tab in the ribbon. You'll notice up here in the Managers section that there are five of these tabs currently selected. Which ones you have enabled is personal preference. Personally, I choose to usually not have recent functions enabled, but you can select any of these that you'd like to have active at any time from here. By right-clicking in our workspace, we're able to open the right-click context menu. In here, we have several options. We'll take just a moment to consider some of the main ones. Up at the top, we'll find that we have access to the point style, line style, 
line width, wireframe color, solid color, and surface color features. These are normally all accessible within the home tab of the ribbon up at the top left. Additionally to these features, which will be discussed in more detail later, we also have the clear colors option, which is used when uh, modifying the location of certain geometry. Again, we'll talk about this in more detail later. Finally, to the lower right of the top section of the context menu, we have some tools to change levels on our drawing. Uh, levels will not be discussed very much in this particular course, but they will be discussed in future courses. Down below here we have the zoom window tool. I'll demonstrate how that can be used by creating a simple rectangle in our view space here. If you have some kind of geometry on your screen and you want to have a more full screen view of it, you can right click and select zoom window. Upon selecting that feature, it will prompt you to, to draw a box around what you want to view. By creating a box around this geometry and clicking, it will zoom my screen to fit whatever was in that window comfortably on my screen. This is a helpful feature if you want to quickly zoom in on a small point on a drawing. Next we have unzoom 80%. Now when you're navigating na Mastercam you might find that you have preferences for how to navigate it personally. Unzoom 80% is a useful tool to s slightly reduce your current zoom level. Like again if I use a rectangle as an example, if I'm zoomed in very close like this and I click unzoom 80% you'll see it just slightly reduces the zoom level I'm currently at. The same result however can be achieved just by scrolling your mouse wheel in and out. Personally this is my preferred method to zoom. Next up we have Fit. Fit is a convenient tool that will quickly resize and reposition your screen to fit all of the geometry you've created on screen. If I again use some rectangles as an example, if I have several features spaced out on my screen and I've only and I only have one of them in view, if I change my view to fit the screen from the right to click context menu, you'll notice it repositions and zooms my screen to comfortably view all three objects. Next up we have the different view options. These can all be normally accessed from the view tab in the ribbon. This way of accessing them is usually more convenient and it's helpful especially for 3D drawing. At the click of a button we can change what side of, of our part we're viewing it from. The top, the front, or an isometric view. Now these don't look mu like much at the moment because we don't have anything drawn. If I was to quickly create a 3D block, which I will do so now, I can now go into isometric view to see a 3D representation of what I've drawn. Note as well that for quick rotational checks, if you click your scroll wheel or your middle mouse click and hold it, you can also use this to rotate apart freehand to see it from different angles. I'm now going to return to the top view, which is usually the standard view we draw from, and I'll delete this object. Next up, we have the Analyze Distance and Analyze Entity properties. Both of these tools can be found in the Home tab of the ribbon. Both are useful for checking features quickly, whether that's analyzing a distance between two points in the case of Analyze Distance, or analyzing an object itself in the case of Analyze Entity properties. This can be especially useful if you click on an arc or a line that you want extra details about, whereas Analyze Distance is useful to select two points and learn about the distance and angle between those two points. Fast Point is one of our drawing tools within Mastercam. It's most convenient for placing geometry at specific locations that you know the coordinates to. Uh, when using Fast Point, you have to enter the X and Y and potentially Z coordinates 
of the location where you want geometry to be created. To do a demonstration of that, we'll start by going over to the wireframe tab and picking any type of geometry here as an example. I, I will use the circle center point option and I will enter here a arbitrary dimension for size. So I will make a circle with a radius of 2.5 inches and press enter. Zoom out a little bit to get a better view of what we're doing. And then with my cursor in the view sheet here, I'm going to just start typing where I want this feature to be located. So I'm going to type in 5.5 and again so that will be the X dimension. X, Y, and Z in that order is what we need to enter separated by a comma uh, between each dimension. So 5.5 comma will do 10 and because I don't care about the Z dimension in this particular instance you actually don't have to enter a Z dimension if you don't want if you don't enter a Z dimension it will just default to zero. So I will now press enter to confirm this placement. You'll notice that our feature then jumped up to this location up here. It has been unlocked from my cursor and locked to those coordinates. I can now either press the green check mark to continue or I can press the blue check mark with the plus to create another feature. We can go through this step one more time. I can add another feature this time I'll do a radius of 2 and again moving my cursor into the main window I'm just going to start typing 2.5x by 5.5y enter and again you'll notice the circle is placed at those coordinates I'm going to hit the green check mark to continue the one other uh, demonstration we'll use here is with line endpoints Line endpoints works a little bit differently than circle center point when using fast point and the reason for that is that there's actually two separate dimensions needed for a line endpoints uh, command to work properly. So to begin we actually aren't going to edit the dimensions on the left panel here at all. We're just going to enter the first point that we want the first end of our line to be at. So in the window here I'm just going to start typing again. Uh, we'll do 2.5 comma uh, 15, enter, and you'll notice once I do that the first point of the line is now attached to the view sheet but the other end of the line is still attached to my cursor. So in order to place the other end of the line I could now uh, click where I want it to end or if we want to continue using fast point I can once again just start typing a number. So this time I will type 12, comma, 15, enter, and you'll notice the line is now created with the second endpoint at the second coordinate I entered. This results in a line that is 9.5 inches long, as you can see called out in the box on the left here. I'll press the green check mark to end this operation, and that concludes this tutorial.